But let's go through a demo of this because that, of course, with boxes and arrows and all that, it's always more simple than reality. And especially when you'll see that a lot of the steps for just that simple phrase of open the standby in the new Oracle home are something that you're going to want to take care of. So what we have here, I mentioned that we have our Boston primary or Chicago standby. So we can go into the data guard command line interface and just examine the configuration. That will show us that we have the primary database and the physical standby, and we have the name of that Chicago standby being some disaster recovery type name. Once we know that, then we can go to the Chicago standby. And remember the first step was to open the standby in the new Oracle home, but there's a lot more to it than that. So first, what you want to do is make sure that when you move to a new Oracle home, all of the files that you need are in the right places. For example, your data guard broker config files shouldn't be left in your old Oracle home. In this case, they're outside the home, so we're in good shape. Then we want to create a restore point on the standby as a fallback mechanism. So we create that restore point, and then we need to shut down the database and move it to the new Oracle home. So we use serve CTL because in this case, we're in a rack environment. So we shut down the database and uh, we take a look at some of the other files that are going to be necessary here. For example, our SP file, great. That's not in the old Oracle home, so we don't have to move that. But by default, your password file is in a location in your 12.2 home. So we're going to copy that to the new 19C home. Likewise, we have to move the TNS admin files, the things that are going to govern connection to that database. Those need to be moved to the new Oracle home as well. And then we look at the Aura tab because uh, Data Guard isn't going to automatically detect that you had moved this database and started up in the new Oracle home. We want to make sure that the Aura tab is current. So we go edit the Aura tab and give it the new Oracle home location. Finally, we start the database in managed recovery mode in the new Oracle home. And that means telling serve CTL where the database is going to be or what binaries are going to be used to open that database and starting up the database in mount mode using that Oracle home. We get the status of it and we see that the instance is mounted. So this means we can now be in managed recovery mode managed by the 19C binaries. All of that done just for that simple, open the standby in the new Oracle home. By contrast, upgrading that primary database is dead simple. All you have to do is you have your simple command, uh, your config file here with your source and target Oracle home, uh, log file location, upgrade SID, and then we use one command to upgrade the database. Now, in this case, the database is a CDB with two pluggable databases. So it'll take some amount of time to upgrade, depends on the complexity of the database more than anything. But once it's done, then you'll see this note here that says, drop the guaranteed restore point from your database once you're happy with it. Now that once you're happy with it means that you, the DBA, should go take a look at your configuration before you go drop in those guaranteed restore points and make sure everything looks good. Make sure that the databases are up, that your, your redo logs are shipping properly and so on. So we can look at our configuration using the data guard command line. We see that yes, our primary is up and running and transport is happening there. We can go look at our standby, make sure that transport is happening to the standby and that our apply lag is minimal. In this case, can't get much more minimal than zero seconds. So we're in good shape. Now that we've verified that we're in good shape, now let's go drop that guaranteed restore point that was our fallback mechanism. So we connect to the primary, get the guaranteed restore point, and we drop it. But there's one more step, because remember, we also created that guaranteed restore point on the standby. So we can likewise connect to the Chicago standby, find the guaranteed restore point there, and drop that. And once you've dropped the restore point on the standby, everything is up and running, and you've now upgraded your data guard configuration.